And this intermission, that's an uh, um, important point I want you to make, and important more in the sense, um, more in the philosophical sense than, um, than, than you know, then I'm going to ask you questions about in module three. Um, it's a, uh, it, it, this is an important thing to astronomy, because a lot of work in astronomy goes into distinguishing between these things. Um, things that are apparent, like uh, apparent magnitude or apparent brightness of stars versus the actual brightness of stars as an actual amount of energy that's released by stars. And we'll get to that in module four. <laughs> and um, so it's just a curious phenomenon of an example of something that's apparent. Uh, I, I really don't know why it, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess, uh, from a scientific point of view, there is no reason why why the moon and the sun has a par same apparent size from Earth. The moon is actually slightly bigger, I think, uh, most of the time, and and it, it is a remarkable coincidence. It's like there's no laws of physics that says the moon uh, satellite of a planet should have the same apparent size as the sun. In fact, moon is rather unique in how large it is uh, compared to the main uh, primary that it's orbiting. So um, so we have that remarkable coincidence that allows us to see a spec spectacular views like a solar eclipse. So um, it's just a curiosity. Now, um, um, yeah, and this is just uh, pointing out the, the, the huge actual size of the sun. And this is a, uh, uh, composite image from NASA, uh, from the, uh, they call it transit of Venus. By transit, they mean Venus is passing through our view of the sun. So this is kind of a, like a solar eclipse <laughs> in that Venus is eclipsing part of the sun, but it's such a tiny part. And um, if you know that the size of Venus is a very similar to size of the earth, this uh, allows you to see just uh, how much bigger sun is compared to the planet. And even this is, um, it um, shows Venus to be larger than it actually is because Venus is closer to us than, uh, than the sun is to us. So, yeah. so the important point that I wanted to end, with, end this intermission with is really this point here. Much work in astronomy goes into trying to figure out the actual from the apparent. And it's almost easier. So, you know, I show you a simulation here. When you know the, the actual, like you know actually what the size of Earth is, what the size of the sun is, you know actually where Mars is, then simulating something like this, it's uh, relatively easy. It's, uh, you know, um, well, I, I don't have good analogies in mind, but um, when you know the actual reality of things, from that to figure out the apparent, it takes all that takes is a bit of a um, simple-ish simulation. What's much harder is to is figuring out this actual. That was a topic of module one, uh, the debate between geocentrism and heliocentrism, because. Um, what people were working with were the apparent, what you see in the sky. And from figuring out from what you see in the sky to how things actually are, it takes a lot of work. It takes building a model, testing predictions of the model. And uh, from the philosophical point of view, what I want to highlight here is that much work is still much work in astronomy still goes into trying to figure out the actual from the apparent. Um, I guess the only distinction is, you know, solar system, we think we have a pretty good idea of how it actually works. So uh, a lot of astronomical work these days has to do more deep space objects where we can send the actual probes. Um, but that's, uh, I, I think uh, as an amateur astronomer, if I had to summarize what a lot of work in astronomy is, is trying to figure out um, how the world universe actually works from our observation from a single vantage point within the solar system. Um, so, um, so this, uh, um, what we cover here, this is really what you need for the phases of the moon project. And 
the point of the project is that um, that um, so you know this is, figure is showing you the actual. So this is actually you know sun is very far away. I'm oh, sorry very far away on the right side of the screen. There's a sunlight coming mostly parallel and the moon is orbiting around the earth and um, the actual uh, view of the moon and the earth is the sun is already always illuminating half of earth and half of moon, the side that faces the sun. Now, when you look at the moon from earth, the appearance of the moon changes as um, depending on how much of the lit side that you look at when it's new moon you see none of the lit side so the moon appears completely dark or you don't see it at all and as the moon uh, orbits into the position where more proportion of this lit side is visible from earth it becomes crescent and sometimes people call this a half moon uh, half a moon is not a thing. <laughs> we call this the first quarter because it's the first quarter of a cycle. And then as more of the lit side is visible, it becomes gibbous and the, the full moon. And um, and and then uh, so th throughout this entire cycle, um, the portion uh, proportion of the uh, fraction of the moon that uh, lit remains the same. It's half. What changes is how much of that half is visible from Earth, and how much of the other half, the darker half, is visible from Earth. So, and I think this uh, knowing this actual picture actually helps you figure out um, how the appearance corresponds to the the, the underlying reality, um, like where the moon is in the cycle. So, you know, when I look at the moon, I <laughs> knew from the appearance that it was, we are in the waning gibbous cycle. And part of that is um, from, you know, people's observation and knowing how moon orbits the earth. Um, there's a little mnemonic that I have that, um, am I almost towards the end? Okay, one more probably, yeah. Um, I look at the west side to see if the moon is waxing or waning. And uh, this is one of the reasons I wanted you to do the, the observation project because when you look at diagram like this, I think it um, it's kind of a harder to see, uh, know, know from this diagram uh, which side is east, which side is west. And uh, I think, um, a software like a Stellarium will give you a better experience of what orienting yourself in moon observation looks like. So here, this side is the west side. So waxing crescent, it's a, a getting lit from the west side, which is growing. And here, it's still the west side here with the waning gibbous. The west side is getting darker, and that's spreading <laughs> until it's waning crescent and new moon. 